When you visit a place that's notoriously haunted, don't expect to be disappointed. Posted to YouTube by Corndictive, the uploader writes of this clip, Watch the very top window of the house. That flash didn't happen when we were taping this and none of us know what it is. There were no cars out when this happened. The top window in question is that of the Glenmore Mansion. This clip necessitates a little background on this spooky place. As it turns out, many of the historical sites of Jefferson County, Tennessee are crazy haunted. Glenmore Mansion was built in 1799. It belonged to a family for a century and was later bought up by Mr. Milton Preston Jarnigan, who named the house after his first son who passed away as an infant. The home was in the Jarnigan family for a further century. Over the course of more than two centuries, passing in this old home were bound to occur, resulting in the haunting of these hallowed grounds. According to some legends, the house is like an Escher drawing in that the exterior windows are more in number than the interior windows. Others also suggest the home's height changes, although some say the mega mansion has 15 rooms across 5 stories, with other sites reporting there are 27 rooms. When the mansion falls dark, visitors claim there's a presence roaming around the home, but don't worry, the presence is benevolent. Some believe it to be the ghost of a local historian, Thomas Roach. When alive, Roach claimed that if ever a ghost was found there, it would be him. But one of the creepiest sightings happened outside the mansion altogether. A young girl is often seen walking along the estate's road at night in the darkness. From unexplained sounds to shadows in the mirrors, the mansion has had its fair share of ghastly ghosts. Tours of the home are routine, but once the lights are out and the house has been abandoned for the night, some say a light turns on in the attic. This Victorian gem of a house seems so perfectly cookie cutter that it's the perfect place for a haunting, and the unsettling nature of the home is confirmed by this video. The crew focuses in on an upstairs window where they see lights or a flash of white and something moving inside side. Can you spot it? Whether you believe in ghosts or not, you probably wouldn't want to be in Glenmore Mansion when the lights turned on. You're bound to come across strange things in the middle of nowhere. Published in October of 2019, the cameraman sets out into the forest on the outskirts of the city of Perm, and what he finds is that it's occupied. He eventually arrives at this strange structure, plastic sheets topped by wooden planks. When he removes one of the sheets, you see that it leads into an underground hovel of some sort. Deeper into the forest, he encounters another strange structure. This one again is made up of plastic and tarps, but it's been built above ground between two trees. There is a pair of jeans hanging on a limb, a plastic bag hanging from another and a whole pile of garbage scattered on the ground. He peers inside to find someone sleeping in the shelter. He hurries away but comes across one last structure in his journey. When he peeks in, you can tell that someone lives inside this one too, but there's no one home at this time. One side is covered in branches to camouflage the structure, while items are hung on a line to dry. Obviously, it looks like a small community of people live in this forest, and I'm not sure how friendly they're gonna be to this guy popping in to say hi. Ignorance is bliss, and sometimes it's best that certain things remain invisible to the human eye. Posted to the Chills Narrator subreddit by Miss Doolittle Tex. This video was taken at the Haunted Queen Anne Hotel in San Francisco. Originally posted on YouTube in March of 2020, Tex writes, I have been listening to creepy stories and been watching YouTube videos about ghost investigations and experiences since they existed, which resulted in me paying more attention to my surroundings, heightening my awareness. The Queen Anne Hotel has some history. Located on Sutter Street in San Francisco, initially built as a girls' boarding school, the Queen Anne Hotel is said to be haunted by the former headmistress, Mary Lake. Her office at room 410 is believed to be the most haunted room in the building. 
The uploader of the video booked this room to stay in overnight. In preparation for the stay, she bought a Fleur thermal cam for her iPhone. She duly notes that the hotel is charming as heck and she didn't feel anything particularly unsettling while there. That is, until she thermal cammed room 410. She tested out her thermal cam on her husband, on electrical sockets, water lines, and other hot and cold spots. Then she entered the bathroom. Pointing her thermal cam towards the half-closed shower curtain, she started to see a figure in the thermal footage next to her that she believed appeared from behind the curtain. As you can see, there is her own thermal image in its reflection, and not too far away right beside it, another full-sized figure. Could it be headmistress Mary Lake herself? When going through pictures she took of the room, the uploader also discovered this creepy face in the wallpaper. Do you see it? It's almost like the room is watching you. Sometimes paranormal explorations turn up horrific discoveries. YouTuber Mo Sarji uncovered several in this abandoned hospital. While walking through the hospital's hallways, he comes across defunct tech and discarded medical supplies. The younger people that watch my videos, which is a small percentage, um, yeah, this is what we would watch and open up applications and stuff. It's pretty cool. Oh, ew, we got blood covered gloves over here. This is disgusting. This room looks like it's been staged by someone before Mo. We got blood everywhere. Holy sh**. Jeez. Okay, this is, I don't want to be in this room. That's gross. On the wall in red is the word leave. Then in the next room. Is that a body bag? Oh, <gasps> no, that's not a body bag. I thought that was a body bag for a sec. Jesus Christ. No, that's just a mattress. It's so strange though. It's got like these pipes coming down from it. He breaks out the UV light to check out the fluids on this hospital bed. So, as you guys can see, I do have my UV light over here and this is all blood. Holy sh**. This is literally, there's blood everywhere in this room, man. This is unbelievable. I, I did not expect this. I don't know why there's so much blood here, but look at it. Look at how it illuminates. While we can't be sure that this is that red liquid of life, this place is by far one of the creepiest abandoned places I've ever seen. Beam Me Up Scotty, published to YouTube in June of 2019, this CCTV footage reveals a possible spirit captured on video in Port Moresby that same year. The footage shows an intersection that looks to be on the outskirts of the city, probably from restaurants or shops that are still open at night. Street lamps illuminate the roadway, blinking on and off as a truck turns at the crossroads. Then something strange and out of place appears. On one corner of a median, a ghostly glowing mist manifests before rising upwards and out of sight. On closer inspection, the small figure appears humanoid, glowing at its core. But what is it? And where did it go? Have you ever owned a doll that just isn't right? One that you spot on your desk in the darkness of night, staring at you? Published in May of 2015, this footage of a haunted doll will make your toes curl. The doll in question, which looks creepy in its wide-eyed stare already, suddenly does something you least expect. It blinks. The person taking the video hurries off, likely not wanting to see what the doll will do next. One of the freakiest things about this footage is that the doll doesn't look like a little girl's toy. It's a full-grown woman doll, makeup and all. You don't expect an inanimate doll to suddenly blink at you in the darkness. When it does, that image stays with you. It haunts you. A YouTube series called The Under Vlogs follows Rachel, Kiva, Tyler, and Derek on their various adventures. This time, they're split up on a competitive scavenger hunt, checklist and all, in a creepy 1908 children's hospital that's been abandoned since 1998. Tyler and Derek are goofing around, but things become tense when they notice a creepy creepy clown head with dripping red eyes that could be a warning of what's about to come their way. They sense something wrong and run away, and that's when, approximately 10 seconds later, this shadowy figure looks out at them, roughly the same height as the clown graffiti in the 
doorway, so I'm glad they followed their instincts and left fast. A ghost hunting group called No Fear Paranormal lives up to their name while exploring a haunted cemetery with a K2 meter, a spirit box, and some recording equipment. The name of the haunted place they're exploring is the Tonopah Cemetery in Nevada. They ask it a question, but apparently whatever is nearby has only one topic on its mind. Can you tell us how many of us are out here? How many people are in a cemetery? A scary voice of a man comes through their paranormal equipment and calmly responds with two words, a demon. I'm not sure if this is a real ghost EVP or not, but the way it immediately tells them that a demon is nearby is frightening to say the least, and possibly more than a creepy coincidence. This security footage shows a strange moving blur that distorts large sections of the floor as it passes by. A short while later, someone appears to be shoved from behind while walking by. It's odd how they lose their balance while walking across the exact same part of the floor. That was blurry only moments earlier. Also notice how, for whatever reason, they immediately looked down at the floor. Could they possibly be seeing something with their own eyes that the camera doesn't detect? A YouTube channel called The Paranormal Detectives investigates the Morton Corbet Castle in England. A man named Paul Holmyard cursed this property after his exile sometime during the late 1500s. And centuries later, his curse still apparently stains these walls. The paranormal detective set up two haunted dolls of their own to act as spiritual condents for anything nearby. Not only does one of their dolls, Elizabeth, fall over, but this strange black line begins leaking from its neck onto the wall behind. Fully stretched out at 1 minute and 53 seconds, it almost looks like some kind of tentacle or even a parasite. Is this special effects, or could we be witnessing a spiritual entity caught on camera while leaving Elizabeth? If you're about to blame some nighttime mischief on your pet, hold off for a hot minute and watch this. Posted to the r slash ghosts subreddit, Barton all writes that his cat has been knocking things over at night for the past few weeks and waking them up, which is unlike him because he's a quiet cat during the day. So they set up a surveillance camera to try and catch him in the act. This is what they found. The first segment shows something fluttering the leaves of this flower on the table, but we know it's not the cat because he passes by the couch to the left. Later, as the cat is sitting on the couch, a dish towel falls from the fridge. Then an object is heard moving in the kitchen, and a close-up reveals the thing jiggling on its own on the counter. At the same time, a strange shadow appears on the front of the counter, although it's not clear if it's the cat being alerted to the sound or something else. Soon after, another object falls loudly from the countertop. Thus, we cannot see too well, nor do we know where the cat is. Then, after a strange orb moves through the scene, something else moves on the counter and is pushed to fall to the floor, all while the cat is perched on the table far away, watching. <coughs> then another object falls loudly next to it, which scares even the cat. This one wakes the owner up, who calls his cat a pain, but after watching the video in the morning, we're sure he regrets that. Was this cat, as some redditors suggest, just protecting her owner at night? Published in June of 2008 by Damien Black, the shadow people of Emerson County are caught on video, causing havoc in the forest. According to Damien in his description, the first reports of these creatures occurred in 1957. In his own words, in August of 1997, roughly two miles from where original reports originated, a video camera was found and turned into local authorities. What they saw on the old tape was scary, mysterious, and remains unexplained to this day. The video shows some grainy footage in the forest. At first, there's just trees and brush, but after a moment, the cameraman says he's heard something moving. Zooming in, you can vaguely see that something, a translucent form of a figure as it moves through the trees. It's difficult to tell if it's a man, animal, or something else, but it does look like a shadow figure. 
At first, it seems perfectly docile, and then it screams. The pair run, but it's unknown whether they made it out of the forest alive. That terrifying sound may have been the last thing they ever heard. A small bluish figure briefly hovers outside of a home before disappearing out of sight. It's hard to say what this is, or even how close the object even was. On one hand, it looks like it could just be a strand of hair, but the way it hangs around for so long is quite strange. This object was also somehow able to activate the doorbell cam, so it must have had some mass to do it. The person who uploaded this video claims that it's a ghost, but let me know what you think this mysterious object is. Even with video evidence, I still can't fully tell. YouTuber Stevanka, also known as Stephanie from 90 Day Fiance, is certainly no stranger to having bizarre moments caught on camera, but nothing could have prepared her for a creepy surprise like this. I don't really talk about paranormal stuff on my channel. The reality TV star thinks she could have possibly caught real evidence of a paranormal ghost sighting on her home CCTV system. Let's analyze the events and see if this spooky encounter is real or fake. One night, while entertaining her family, Stevanka casually opens up the security app to check her CCTV cameras. That's when she discovers some mysterious activity going on in front of her house. Eventually, it dawns on me like, that's the figure of a person. Within 10 seconds, the bizarre figure seems to transform into a solid white, ghostly floating form. Stevanka herself alternates between believing and not believing the activity is paranormal. I don't want to get anything wrong. So these are her exact words at 6 minutes and 10 seconds. I think it's a ghost. Everyone I've talked to, everyone I've showed it to, even skeptics are like, that's a ghost. So she thinks it's probably paranormal, which is fair, but I do have a theory. The porch light and the lamppost are reflecting light back into the camera, which could create this bizarre effect in the middle. But with that said, Stevanka has tried to recreate the scary moment many times, and she has a legitimate question. Maybe it was a, a glitch, but then like if it was a glitch, then why did it stop? Like why did it only happen that one night? I can't say for sure but I suspect that one of the lights was out when she tried this again. I think both of the lights have to be on at the same time for this bizarre occurrence to happen. But if she did replicate this under the exact same lighting conditions and saw nothing, then it would prove that this is a mysterious figure caught on tape after all. You might think you've got nerves of steel. This video was posted to the very spooky video subreddit by Pekonik. In the video, the likely US-based officer pulls over a driver at night, approaches the driver's side door with a flashlight to question him, but then never gets the chance. The dash cam footage shows what happens inside. A bright light bursts from the sky, causing the patrolman to stagger a little bit before he vanishes. Leaving a steaming clothes behind in a pile beside the vehicle, the car then speeds off either out of fear for what just happened or to flee the scene. Having been an active participant in the officer's vaporization, we're left to wonder which it is. The clip first appeared on the YouTube channel from Tim Beckers, who said, I downloaded the video and shared it with a couple of my friends in the community, and they all told me the same. This footage looks real and it could change everything we know. What do you think? Could this be real or a clever fake? A YouTuber named Yankee Reb travels to the haunted battlefield of Gettysburg, Virginia, and stands before an old battle cannon. He grows very still and records nothing but darkness for a full 20 minutes before any paranormal activity occurs. As the night progresses, a lone soldier silently marches around the cannon and stops just outside of the muzzle, which is where you would stand to reload it. Holy, holy c Down by the cannon, you see that? Oh, what is that? I say it could be a soldier because, aside from the historic location, I can also kind of make out the old style sash and hat that some soldiers used to wear. No way, what is that? I have no idea. Did you get that on the camera? I, it's recording. Oh my gosh, did you see that? His attire is most visible at around the 1 minute and 58 second mark, so that's when you can get the clearest and most direct look for yourself. Let me know if you can see what he has on. I, did you, honestly? I, I wouldn't believe it unless we recorded it. 
Maybe this soldier in particular was accidentally taken out by his own cannon while reloading, which used to happen quite often back those times. It's common knowledge that animals are very sensitive to spirits. This woman's dog seems to have detected something supernatural near the stairs. Published by Exploring with Felicity in December of 2021, this scary video captured a mysterious full-body apparition on camera. After her dog wouldn't approach the stairs, even for his ball, Felicity set up a security camera to see what was going on. Here's what she found. In a corner of the hallway near the stairs, an apparition appears for a moment. It moves around and then disappears before reappearing again and turning in place. It looks like a woman with long hair or a veal wearing a long dressing gown. The apparition, dis the apparition disappears and reappears once more, much closer to the camera. But it looks like she's bent over this time and standing up, her hair hanging over her head. The image really gives me the chills. Is this a ghost nun, as some are suggesting in the comments? I'm not sure if that's the case, but whatever she is, she certainly doesn't seem very friendly. A YouTuber named Wo Kun Cha is on a mission to explore the most haunted places in Pakistan faster than anyone in the history of ghost hunting. Since August of 2019, he has investigated no less than 60 paranormal locations. But for time's sake, let's focus on these top three scariest ones. In September of 2019, he travels to a house position possessed by demonic desert spirits called jinns. He takes a single step in the first room and already feels a cold presence warning him to stay away. Then the door across the room closes so slowly you have to watch the shine of his camera light to see it. When he fearlessly takes a few steps forward, a ghostly white arm reaches for the knob to shut it the rest of the way, at which point his flashlight turns itself off. The same door clatter loses again behind him. Someone's on the other side, but whether it's a ghost or a member of his crew is what I want to know. Also, what is he saying here to provoke such an angry response? Nobody is on the other side of the door, at least no one that I can see, though I suppose someone could be ducking under the camera here to make it look that way. But that's when he sees it, the thing responsible for closing the door, a white apparition who glides away without a word. It's creepy for sure but also questionable, because he sees the ghost and then enters the room looking the exact opposite way for some reason, which makes me think that they could have digitally added the ghost later. Next, he hears something so eerie and insane that it almost has to be edited. Let me know if you think it's legit, because if so, then this is pretty much proof of the supernatural. voices, perhaps children, whose lives the jinn has snuffed. The ghost hunter understandably seems reluctant to go any further, and perhaps senses a great danger is near. As it turns out, he's right. <laughs> No one seems to be inside of this room, but as he timidly rounds the corner, I think I see this grey figure in a cloak standing on the other side, the gin itself. It's blurry, yes, but something nonetheless seems to be looking straight at him. The top arrow is its face, and the bottom its outstretched hand, palm up. He flees then and there, but on February 2nd of 2020, returns to the home for another look. I think they might be saying that something is on the roof here, but I need your help to translate and make sure. Apparently, whatever it is, it's now in the room with them so they step outside. They take a short breather but as soon as they're back inside, the trouble starts once again. I'm pretty sure he's asking for confirmation of a ghost during this part and soon he gets a response. Look, you are, I don't want to get 
at which point this chain on a nail begins to sway back and forth for well over 10 seconds completely on its own. Door slams shut but Wokun Cha is determined to go further than before and eventually he comes across a bizarre straw hut that fills him with unexplainable dread. The earth looks recently disturbed. Anything could be buried beneath the rubble. He's contemplating the structure when the spirits become restless. Astaghfirullah. Or maybe it's just a string tied to a tree. Either way, he seeks shelter in an area that's just as haunted as everywhere else, and soon he hears voices coming through the walls. At this point, you would think nothing could stop this fearless explorer. Doors slamming, groaning moans, and objects moving on their own aren't enough to make him leave. But the part that scares him the most is literally nothing at all. A presence that we can't see and only he can feel. Is this part real or just good acting? Allah <laughs> He turns around and looks at the corner as if something had just brushed by. Whatever touched him leaves him too scared to re-enter. I've saved the creepiest one of all for last, a paranormal adventure that takes place on October 23rd, 2019. That's when Wokun Cha travels to a site full of unmarked burials. Many of them are child-sized. It's a calm night and crickets chirp as he says a few words that I would like translated because they sound very somber and sorrowful. The stillness of the night is soon replaced by a rushing whisper that sounds lonely and paranormal, a rising cry of anguish possibly originating from the other side of life. As he reaches an old memorial, he hears another voice call out, a near laugh. And approximately two minutes later, the same voice laughing. His nervous fear is overpowered by a morbid curiosity to stay and see who the voice belongs to. I was halfway expecting a hand to bust forth from the earth, but what happens next is just as frightening. Allahu Akbar. Astaghfirullah. Astaghfirullah. He checks around the side of the building and sees nothing. He's all alone again, just himself in the graves. I wish Wokun Cha all the best, but at the same time really hopes he slows down to a safer rate of exploring. If he keeps this up, it's only a matter of time before something really bad happens to him. And at this rate, he might not even make it to his 100th video. Located in the UK, Bishton Hall is one of the most haunted places in the country. YouTuber Ghost Shift UK explores these hallowed halls in this scary video, and they quickly get a reading on their paranormal devices. Whoa! Hello! Whoa! That is completely bit mental. When he asks the spirits to trigger the K2, they comply. Can you just make that K2 red? Then, out of nowhere, the spirit shares its name through the spirit box. Jesus. Jesus. Gerald. Okay. Even the ambient noises in the cellar sound haunting. He then hears a voice, which he describes as a shout. I'm just so much just shouted so much. And then he hears this strange noise. That's freaked me out a lot. I'm convinced. It might have been Ghost Jubap. 
When he returns to the room to check out the ghost tube device, he captures these EVPs. He heads upstairs to set up his devices in the headmaster's room, where they immediately detect activity. Creaks really bad. Thank you. Thank you very much. Who's that then? Clearly, the headmaster is here. Max now, that is big time. Thank you. Can you stop, can you? Can you stop for me? Please? Stop. Thank you. Although we don't see any paranormal activity, we do hear a lot throughout this investigation. Ghost Shift UK calls Bishton Hall the most haunted place he's ever explored. It does appear to me to have significant and multiple energies, but I can't tell whether they're good or evil. Is Laney and Ben's poltergeist getting stronger? Watch this video and judge for yourself. As usual, the poltergeist seems to be most active in the kitchen. Activity more and more aggressive. He has even resorted to ruining their dinner. Poltergeist just seemed to be so frustrated. Oh, bless them. Oh, bless them. And he isn't finished. It goes without saying that Laney and Ben share space with one of the most active poltergeists on YouTube. I don't know if Dave and Andy are becoming more aggressive due to anger, or if their YouTube following is cheering them on. Thank you so much for getting me to 50,000 subscribers here on my Clips channel. If you want to support, please press that subscribe button. Let's get to 60,000 subscribers next. Thank you.